how you're trying to augment your combos. I'm going to flip the script on you in order to make sure first wins that best of three set and heads on to losers finals, a top three finish up against Fawn. And going against a, a Duck Hunt, you know, the, the idea here is just kind of stuff out Mithra's, uh, Mithra's entrance, Mithra's speed, Mithra's dash track, and you're seeing it kind of work out very well with the very, very horizontal play pigeons. And this is something that Ch 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 Chicken Quesadillas has to really deal with at a at, at a mi minute level where it's like, you just got off a really good win, and now you're going into literally like, a, not a hard counter at all, but just like, very annoying to deal with if you're trying to do what Mithra does best. And what Fawn does best is um, killing you. That was so beautiful. Like, it, from both sides even. Like, first, timing the foresight to gain that extra advantage. Those little, that little bit of extra speed in order to make your way through. And then you find the downer as well <laughs> on the platform. Fawn reacting in the camera. Fawn being like, oh, I can do Mithril. I can do Pyro up here. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I knew she was saying in her mind. But at the very least, it's still, I feel like, in Fawn's uh, favor because of the way that she just typically plays. It doesn't allow, again, Pyra to really enter, but when, Py when I'm sorry, Mithra, but when Pyra is on stage, it's more like, okay, I'm duck hunt, I have to be very careful with my approach. Finally, going for the wake up, going for the double up there, trying to get to the nair, the nair as well, but not going to be quite there yet. Devin, I want you to clip one of these interactions in neutral where Fawn stuffs out. Uh, Burst's approach, say with, the word. With like a gunman or a can or a clay pigeon, whatever. W one of them. There's been a, a couple of them thus far. But Fawn's ability to just like cl cut down angles and pathways is just so, so good. And then the jump back in order to find that clay pigeon as well, respecting the side B. Just looking for the four. Uh oh. Oh, I love I that delayed get up from Fawn. Just didn't immediately tech it or tech it at all. Just kind of rolled back at her own leisure, and that kind of messed up versus plan of I could go down there, I could go for up there, up smash. And instead, Fawn was like, "Well, I can just reverse it back onto you, and we're gonna just do that right here." Um, Fawn only has 74 percent. Ah! Okay, we're fine. We're living. Yeah, first, Still doable. First, very ready to try and put out a hitbox here. Forward air is jumping twice in order to continue to feign the forward tilt coming out. Typically, that's what you see about Pyra in the corner. The, end, the short hop was so nice to get over the clay pigeon. Yet, no finisher quite yet. Okay, a really good usage of the can there to just kind of divert burst attention for a second, and that allows Fawn to get back on stage. Gets the clay pigeon as well, but that should be. Up air. Oh, we almost, almost took it. Didn't go for the up air like you're trying to tell him telepathically. The gunman to avoid uh, burst from interrupting Fawn's recovery from the ledge, and then the can not gonna be biting her back and back in her own uh, her own character. So we're able to kind of keep the momentum up even longer. No one has really gotten a bunch of percentage here until right then and there. Right, oh, burst. okay, grab. Burst starting to throw out some of these. A, a plenty of these kill options. The back air eventually landing. 63%, certainly far from out of it, but another attempt at a dash in, getting stuffed out. And something you called out a little bit earlier, Mod, just like the ability to throw hazards in the general face of this Mithra has kept, Py uh, excuse me, has kept burst on Pyra for majority of this game. This is the one chance you should go Pyra probably for this kind of matchup because Big sword, go hard. it. It, Mithra has not gotten the 50% the combo that she's known for. It's been Pyra getting majority of the percentage on deck here, which is why Fawn is now struggling a little bit here. I love the adaptation from uh, from Burst, which is like, okay, I can't play Py Mithra, I can just play Pyra and do a bunch of damage and just be a little bit smarter about which moves are going to connect and which ones aren't. Efto not going to be connecting the way that you know, Burst is looking for. Going in for the side as well on the gunman. The longer they, the longer you hit him, the longer they stay out, by the way. So he's still not leaving. But the can. Oh, the f head in palm reaction to that bad DI trying to dash away or dash off stage. But, I mean, it's the, it's the biggest difference between Pyra and uh, Mithra. Like, Mithra has to risk herself in order to get through so many of these interactions. Meanwhile, Pyra... Look at all, so I applauded earlier just how good um, Duck Hunt's entourage of items is at stuffing out Mithra's approaches. 
Side B right here consumes can and gunman, and per as you mentioned, prevents spawning an additional yep. gunman because he's still there. Mm -hmm. Just one button invalidating all of your traps, forcing you to sit in shield. It is. It's a powerful thing just to hold on to, and the fact that Burst hold, held on to uh, the like this powerful option until very late in game one shows his own discipline as well to play through the hard stuff in order to establish the easy win con when it needs to happen. Absolutely, and I love that we're still going. We did go for the pack for the Mithra, the majority of that of that percentage, but now we're going right to the Pyra. And again, now that we have that attention, that attention on lock, Vaughn can't just kind of stuff at that burst option from burst, right? So right. now she has to play a tiny bit more differently. She has to be a little, a tiny bit more aggressive going in with these landings, going in with the gummit on the on the stage, and then the cans on the platforms. But even with those slight changes, it's still going to be Burst coming out on top on that first stock. They went for upper, upper, going right back to the Pyra very, very quickly here. Very high recovery option from uh, from Fawn. Can be contested by Burst, and it absolutely is. But now you're off stage as Pyra Mithra. Nearly getting back onto the ledge, but now you are without a sword, and you're getting Clay Pigeon for your efforts. No forward or connection, however. Burst's offense is so measured a lot of the time. So they usually seem like they're hyper fixating on one or two buttons and deciding whether or not to use them because they're anticipating whether or not their opponent has them in mind. The down air up smash hits on the backside because so it does not close out the stock. But shout out to the combo that Fawn just did to get herself right back into this game. Exactly. Just waiting at the can, and you see it pretty much almost ignites a blazing and coming in for a last little bit of damage. This could go anyone's way, missing the F2, so that's huge for Fawn to get this momentum going in her favor and get this stock taken now or never. Can can be forcing out the air recovery and then poking, uh, poking a uh, burst back off stage once more. But now it's a complete position change. High percentage, low iframes. Fawn's like, what do I do? <laughs> Sour down air, but well. Back hit of down air, rather. I'm not going to call that a sour spot. It knows Where, where's the sour spot, Henry? Point it out to me. It's a sour spot in the room with us right now. <laughs> it's there, I swear. I promise. Oh, trying to keep on Mithra here just to gain that initial hit, but not going to find it. Solid. Vaughn covering with the anti sharking effectively in order to keep this game well within reach, well within grab with an instant jab. Frame two, by the way. She needs it. She does need it. <laughs> we need it, bro. It's a joke. It's comedy. For the bit in Minecraft. Alright, Clay Pigeon be frame one. Gonna be connecting very beautifully. The can, even though it was placed right after the hit of the uh of the the nair, it's not gonna be enough, unfortunately. Another okay, we're just jumping, jumping right into it. Understandable. Me too. Check out limited Fawn is making this scramble situations. Typically they were throwing out like so much, uh, so many hazards in order to try and keep Burst out. Yep. But because Burst has been finding effective ways to get in with empty hops, they're really relying on Can as just this instant utility to have at their disposable, uh, disposal and cutting back on the use of uh, Clay Pigeon a lot. There's a Clay Pigeon once more, gonna be following through with the platform, gonna be narrowly avoiding that uh, that gunman on the platform, so able to kind of attempt at a uh, an error recovery, but Fawn is right on top of it. Look at this comeback from Fawn. Now, it, it's never really over, because Pyra in one, it one sneeze, and, and Duck Hunt's unfortunately dead. Fawn has to really outplay the approach here. Maybe two sneezes, two, two sneezes, I meant. Looking for that down tilt, so hungry for that stock. The forward tilt comes down, but no stock taken does not connect. Another down throw comes in. That Flame Nova missed. What perfect aerial manipulation from Vaughn as they call out the jump with the up air. You're not going to be able to get the opportunity to come down with another one of these fares, another one of these uh, nares that can t certainly be taking a stock at 100+. plus. Man, oh man, what a call go, out from Fawn is just like, yeah. <laughs> I, I think she, she embodies us all right there. It's like, are you, not only did that hit, that also took the stock. Are you fluffy kitten? You write me out. I also had no iframes. Like, like, what's going on? <laughs> like, look at the look at the smile. Look at him. He's so happy. He's giggling. He's like, oh let's my let goodness. Let's let it finish. Play, 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 play. Oh, we're gonna miss the. Oh, finish, oh, finish, yeah. oh, finish. One, go!
Or, sorry. In our heart, <laughs> in our heart it finished. <laughs> Going into game three here, both players are pretty much shown that they know what they're doing. Okay. Especially into this matchup. Adaptations have been made on both ends here. Trying to go for the roll in to cover the space, but the clay pigeon able to kind of keep Fawn away from uh, from burst a little bit while longer. Again, the burst was the the burst option from burst was slightly negated by the gunman being right in front of Fawn, but able to just kind of pack it uh, pack it up and continue onwards, which is a really really good showcase of just continuing on. Who cares? And powering straight through all of these items yet again, forcing the juggle and consistently. Wow, that was a risk and a half, but the cans putting Fawn in a spontaneously advantageous situation. And she's gonna take that to the bank for so much damage. The combo did not close out in the stock, but you are so close to one of these up airs sealing the lead here at 150 is this Pyra. Can Burst find a way back? No, she, she just gets a little ticked. A little, a little flick is a tree. <laughs> And there is what I was There's looking for. Pain. Finally, we can not be a little, a little flick on the nose, a little boop. Go to blast zone. Bye bye. Another killer pitch for your efforts, trying to uh, come up with a dash attack. But first, able to just kind of maneuver himself out of the situation and reset it on the middle of the stage. Blazing and on the on the, on the caveman, on the gunman. Gonna. Eh, kind of take him out for a little while there, but Fawn is pretty much unfazed with these down throws into the, uh, into the cans. Has been th throwing a wrench on a lot of Burst's plans. Another just attempted spacing trap there on the part of the Burst, like trying to cover so much space with Pyra's incredibly huge hitboxes, yet Fawn, a new level of discipline has kind of overtaken her uh, gameplay always willing to let Burst swing, and if it means that she can play patient and find the opportunity later, though the up tilt will connect. I mean, just check this lead out, Mon. Like we can, we're certainly seeing Fawn dictate every little instance of what's happening throughout this game. And I was gonna say that the death there isn't even too, too shabby. You already have Burst at over 120, and every interaction that Burst is attempting is being stuffed out by that can or that clay pitch, which is so, so good for Fawn to stay alive. Pull a lot longer than you need than uh than before. The clay, the clay, the pitch. The clay. Oh, the clay, the can. Gonna be coming in once more. Once the two percent is where we see chicken some ideas and the problems are both not gonna be enough. Duck has a pretty okay recovery option, and then you can also add the air dodge on top of it. Fawn is not dying anytime soon off stage, and neither is that forward are gonna be taking chicken some ideas uh, at all. Gotta find a way to fit, to have one of these cans land. You're doing so much damage, and then Max Rage, the instant pull of the trigger there for Burst, going for the instantaneous dash attack. As soon as they saw the can above them, they knew nothing would be quick enough in order to intercept that dash attack and stop it in his tracks. 184, and still sitting in center stage, up until that up there connects. A great overshoot from Vaughn there in order to bring this game back to an even, uh, even station. Though, man, the fact that Burst was able to bring this all the way back certainly puts momentum out there. Back Fawn trying to wrestle it away here, Mai. This Ooh, is what a bit of grab. This has become a very, very heated game very quickly. Fawn constantly popping off whenever they are able to get a stock taken. That's a huge punish that does not... I giggle. I giggle a giggle, I laugh a laugh, but the forward smash not gonna be enough after that, uh, that forward smash on Ooh, the gunman, and we miss the up tilt as well! Fawn is living. Fawn is living somehow. Going for the gambit with that up, uh, up throw into the upper as well, but the dash, the, the down smash, excuse me, calling out the neutral getup and burst continues their loser's run, overtaking the player that put them into losers in the first place. Yeah? What yeah. A, what a run. All the way through. They lost in the first round of top 24. And they said, how about I just win instead? How about I just win the whole Xeno bracket? Now we have to do with John Numbers versus Ages. I don't, I don't even say we fit. It's just John Numbers versus Ages. And it's going to be a very, very exciting grand because of all the people that were in top A, we, it, it wasn't going to be Fong getting her rematch, unfortunately. But I think that's better for her mental health anyway. It's not going to be Vivi going in against John again because I think that's better for mental health anyway. It's going to be instead Chicken Kiss of Ideas burst coming in and putting up some really respectable games against two 
really, really talented players of ours. I love it. I love it. I think I just want to like really highlight just something that the the spacing and the spacing traps that uh, Burst had been doing. They are not trying to hit Fawn. They are trying to make Fawn panic. They are covering everything here with a lot of down airs because of the sheer threat of something like a Pyra forward tilt intercepts there or a dash attack as well. Well, <laughs> excuse me. The sheer threat <laughs> of a uh, a forward tilt or some sort of connection here uh, to close out the stock is so massive. But because they had been doing that for time and time and time again, just like never actually 